A Wall Street analyst at Bank of America believes peak sales for weight loss drugs could hit $100 billion a year by 2030, almost five times the peak sales for Humira, the best-selling drug in history. That is a trillion dollar market opportunity, and I've found seven weight loss drug stocks that could boom. Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here with one of the biggest changes to the drug stock space in decades. Nation, I work as hard in the gym as I do for my money, but I can tell you on the wrong side of the 40s here, it is getting a hell of a lot harder to keep that belly fat off. And I know I'm lucky, millions have had to fight that war for their entire lives. The CDC estimates that 42% of Americans are obese and 1 in 10 have diabetes. That is 139 million people in the U.S. alone, with $173 billion in medical costs. And we are just recently seeing some legit weight loss drugs helping people drop hundreds of pounds. It's not a replacement for a healthy diet and exercise, but for millions of people, it could be hope to get them started. Now, these first two stocks already have drugs on the verge of blockbuster status, but stick around because then I'm gonna share five more stocks to watch that could surprise even higher. In the lead is Eli Lilly, ticker LLY, with its Manjaro-branded terzepatide, helping the stock jump 38% just since February. Patients in a 15 milligram study lost an average of nearly 16% of their body weight, an average weight loss of 30 pounds or more in 72 weeks. More than 86% of patients lost at least 5% of their body weight, and over half, 52%, lost at least 15%, with very few side effects. The most common side effects here were gastrointestinal problems like nausea and diarrhea, but you can see here, it was only found in about 1 in 10 patients beyond that placebo group. Lily already has Manjaro available on several indications, including for type 2 diabetes and is finalizing an FDA application for approval as an obesity drug, though it's already being used for that by many. This drug just launched in the U.S. in the second quarter of last year, about 45 weeks ago, and has already reached over 350,000 prescriptions. And you can see the effect on Lilly revenue in this chart with just the two drugs, Manjaro and Japrika, in red already adding significantly to sales. Of course, as we'll see with our next stock, the market has already caught on to that potential here, and shares of Lilly are trading at nosebleed valuations. The stock is priced at 68 times earnings, a 36% premium to the five-year average, which was already extremely high. For comparison here, the Spider S&P Pharmaceuticals ETF, a fund of the 39 largest drug stocks, trades at just 15 times price to earnings. That's less than a fourth the valuation. Now, I still do think there's an opportunity to invest in Lilly, especially if that hype wears off a little and we get some price weakness. But even on that competition, the company could reach tens of billions in annual sales just from this one drug. Besides the upside to Manjaro, Lilly always has a strong pipeline of drugs, with 21 in phase three trials and another four in review right now. Revenue is expected flat this year before surging 18% next year to $33 billion, and the growth is really gonna take off from there. Novo Nordisk, ticker NVO, is also a front runner here with its Ozempic drug and has seen its own shares up 61% since September. Novo is the global market leader in both obesity and diabetes care, with just over 30% of the diabetes market and approaching 80% in obesity patients. Novo estimates that 764 million people globally live with obesity, but just 15 million are currently being treated. It's already got multiple drugs selling under several indications, including Ozempic under the Wagovi brand for type 2 diabetes and obesity, as well as Ribelsis, a pill for type 2 diabetes that is being used for weight loss as well. Trials here showed patients with an average weight loss between 17 to 18 percent and greater prevalence, with 90 percent of patients seeing at least 5 percent weight loss and 41% seeing weight loss of 20% or more. So not only is Novo ahead of the game on this one, but it is also a value play with shares trading at 44 times on that PE basis. Now that is still 60% above its five-year average, but relatively cheaper than shares of Lilly. Sales are expected up 23% this year to $31 billion, with its obesity care sales already up 124% in the first quarter alone. Nation, these weight loss drugs could be the blockbusters of the decade on a market that is widely expected to be as high as $100 billion annually in less than a decade. That includes over half a billion people in the diabetes care market and nearly 800 million with obesity. Now, since these drugs don't cure the problem, only really less than the conditions, it's a lifetime drug, right now costing about $1,000 a month that more and more patients are going to be starting every year. You see here in a chart of the pharmaceuticals ETF in green against Eli Lilly in red and Novo in yellow, 
those two stocks booming over the past six months. But there are other weight loss stocks you need to be watching. I'll highlight five of those other weight loss stocks to watch, but first, I wanna personally invite you to get the Weekly Bowtie, our free weekly newsletter with all the stock market news, strategies, and trends you need to know. Each week before the market opens, I'll show you what I'm watching and the stocks that could highlight the week. It's all totally free, just something I like to do for all you out there in the community. So look for that sign up link below. Pfizer, ticker PFE, could be the next one out in the space and with shares reasonably priced coming off of its vaccine boom. The company announced results of a late stage trial in December for a once daily pill that it's expected to launch in 2024 and could reach 10 billion in sales by 2030. Shares reached as high as 24 times earnings on its COVID vaccine boom, but are now down to just seven and a half times on that price to earnings basis, a fraction of the cost for Lilly or Novo and under the sector average. And Pfizer always has a strong pipeline and it's trading at a very attractive price, plus the 4% dividend yield. Amgen, ticker AMGN, may be a little late to the party, but is still gonna benefit from the theme. The company published early stage trial data in November showing its Amgen 133 patients lost 15% of their body weight in 85 days. Now this is a monthly regime instead of weekly, so Amgen is hoping it can pull prescriptions away from other drugs. Plus, besides suppressing the appetite, as do these other drugs, Amgen 133 blocks secretion of certain her hormones in the gut after eating. Now, with this, the company believes it's going to lead to more durable weight loss than those other drugs. Now, that said, the company is just now enrolling candidates for phase two trials, so at best, it's going to be years behind in any drug it launches. Shares trade for 15.7 times PE, and that's a 35% discount to its long-term average. So like Pfizer here, we do see an attractive valuation on this one. We've got three more stocks to highlight that you might not have heard of. But first, you know I've got to send that special shout out to all you out there in the nation. Thank you for spending a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. Shares of WW International, ticker WW, have doubled since highlighting it in December. Now, I've been following this stock for about a year now with 12,000 shares myself and recommended it on great valuation. The company announced in April that it would acquire telehealth prescriptions company Sequence for $106 million, specializing in weight loss drugs like Ozempic. Now, Sequence already has 24,000 members paying $99 a month for appointments and could accelerate revenue for Weight Watchers as it transitions into that plan with its own 650,000 subscribers. Now, that said, shares are not as cheap as when I recommended them back in December, but they still trade for less than annual sales, and this is a company expected to return to profitability early next year. I covered my shares selling a call option against them with a $10 strike price, but there is still some good upside here for new investors. Another stock I own here, Teladoc Health, ticker TDOC, got a 16% bump in April on its own move into the space. And Teladoc is the global leader in virtual healthcare with a provider network that covers 76 million US patients and a billion member data points from traditional telehealth to remote monitoring and next generation primary care. Now, growth has slowed to about 9% annually, but this is still the undisputed leader in virtual health Healthcare. One of my favorite growth stories and valuation is great on this one. Shares trade for just 1.7 times revenue, less than half the valuation the stock was getting just last year, and I think revenue growth does pick up in the future. This one is a little less direct than the others, with Teladoc expanding its provider program into weight management consultation. Here, the company is hoping that that access to virtual appointments with doctors that can then prescribe those weight loss drugs is going to bring on more companies and people to the service. And the highest upside potential here is a penny stock, Altimmune Inc, ticker ALT, with its candidate just out of phase two trials. Now, these shares did plunge 60% in March on the phase two trial results that showed a 24% dropout rate due to GI side effects like nausea and vomiting. Now remember, those were the most common side effects we saw in those other similar drugs from Novo and Nili. But that could be an opportunity for new investors as results were much better than the share price reflects. That 24-week trial of 160 patients showed an average weight loss of 11%. And while that's less than the 15% we average we've seen with these other drugs, remember those were all 68-week and beyond trials. So this is more than half the benefit on half the time. Now, the side effects and dropout rate can be mitigated on dose adjustments and could get this one back on track And considering it's a billion dollar drug candidate on a company valued at just $250 million right now, there could be some massive upside on a positive phase three results. Get your free weekly market update with the link below or click on the video to the right for the nine stocks that could save your life. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.